We now know that for the basic Fourier series theory, we need the following three eigenvalue problems. In the last two lessons, we solved problems in the form of 4.1 and 4.2. In this lesson, we'll determine the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of a problem in the form of 4.3. Again, recall that a number lambda is an eigenvalue if and only if there exists a non-zero solution to the problem given that specific lambda. A non-zero solution is called a corresponding eigenfunction. The following problem is the one that leads to the general Fourier series. We have x double prime plus lambda x equals zero, where x of negative pi equals x of pi, and x prime of negative pi equals x prime of pi. We want to determine the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. Notice here we have not specified the values or derivatives at endpoints, but rather that they are the same at the beginning and end of the interval. As usual, we need to consider lambda less than zero, lambda equals zero, and lambda greater than zero separately. Let's begin with lambda less than zero. We've done this two times before. Recall if lambda is less than zero, if we multiply both sides by negative one, we have negative lambda greater than zero. And because the characteristic equation has two distinct real roots, the general solution can be written in the form of x equals a hyperbolic cosine of square root negative lambda t plus b hyperbolic sine of square root negative lambda t. We also need to find x prime, and therefore we differentiate with respect to t, which requires a chain rule shown here on the right. And now I begin with the condition x of negative pi equals x of pi. We substitute negative pi for t in x, and then we substitute pi for t in x, and then set the two expressions equal to each other. Analyzing this equation, and using the hyperbolic trig identities shown below, the hyperbolic cosine expressions on both sides are equal, but the hyperbolic sine functions on both sides are not equal, which indicates b must equal zero. So if b is equal to zero, then we have x prime is equal to a square root negative lambda, hyperbolic sine of square root negative lambda t. And then we use a condition x prime of negative pi equals x prime of pi. So here we substitute negative pi for t in x prime, and then pi for t in x prime, and set the expressions equal to each other, which is shown here on the right. This equation is only true when a equals zero. So notice both a and b are equal to zero, and therefore when lambda is less than zero, the only solution is x equals zero, which indicates there are no negative eigenvalues. And now let's consider lambda equals zero. For lambda equals zero, we have the differential equation x double prime equals zero, and therefore the general solution is in the form of x equals at plus b, a linear function. Notice x double prime is equal to zero. Using the condition x of negative pi equals x of pi, we have a times negative pi plus b equals a times pi plus b. In order for this to be true, notice a must equal zero. If a is equal to zero, then we have the solution is x equals b. And if x equals b, x prime is equal to zero. Using the condition x prime of negative pi equals x prime of pi, we do get zero equals zero, which is true, but this does not give us any new information and therefore we have x equals b for the corresponding eigenfunctions with the eigenvalue lambda equals zero. So again, lambda equals zero is an eigenvalue and x equals b is a corresponding eigenfunction where b is any real number. So if we let b equal one, we can use the corresponding eigenfunction of x equals one. And now we consider lambda greater than zero. For lambda greater than zero, the general solution is in the form of x equals a cosine of square root lambda t plus b sine of square root lambda t and this is because the corresponding characteristic equation is r squared plus lambda equals zero, giving us two complex roots. Using the condition x of negative pi equals x of pi, we get the equation shown here. Recall that cosine negative theta equals cosine theta, and sine negative theta equals negative sine theta. Therefore, we can write the equation as a cosine square root lambda pi minus b sine square root lambda pi equals a cosine square root lambda pi plus b sine square root lambda pi. Notice the cosine expressions are equal on both sides of the equation, and the expressions involving the sine function are opposites. This indicates for the equation to be true, either b must be zero or sine of square root lambda pi must equal zero. And recall the sine function is zero when the input is a multiple of pi. This indicates in order for the sine function to be zero, square root lambda must equal k for any integers k greater than or equal to one or both a and b are zero. But of course we don't want both a and b to be zero. So for a non-zero solution, 
we have lambda equals k squared, where k is greater than or equal to one. And now we need to find x prime and use the condition x prime of negative pi equals x prime of pi. I've shown this below, we find that a equals zero, or sine square root lambda pi equals zero, with the same result that square root lambda equals k for any integers k greater than or equal to one. As a result, once again, we get lambda equals k squared, where k is greater than or equal to one. So looking at the work below, here we have x and then x prime. In the next line we have x prime of negative pi equals x prime of pi. Using our identities, we can write the equation as shown below, which again gives us square root lambda equals k for all integers k greater than or equal to one, and therefore lambda equals k squared. So using our general solution, this indicates that x equals a cosine kt plus b sine kt. Notice here we simply replaced square root lambda with k. So this is an eigenfunction for any values of a and b, which means we have two linearly independent eigenfunctions, where if we let a and b both equal one, we can use the two linearly independent eigenfunctions, x equals sine kt and x equals cosine kt. Remember a matrix can also have two eigenvectors corresponding to a single eigenvalue, if the eigenvalue is repeated. So in conclusion, when lambda is greater than zero, we have lambda equals k squared as our eigenvalues, where k is any integer greater than or equal to one, and x equals cosine kt and x equals sine kt are corresponding eigenfunctions. Let's go ahead and summarize our findings. So in summary, the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenfunctions are lambda sub k equals k squared, with eigenfunctions cosine kt and sine kt for all integers k greater than or equal to one, and we have lambda sub zero equals zero as an eigenvalue with an eigenfunction of x sub zero equals one. I hope you found this helpful.